we uh, will report about some work we have done together with others, of course. I mean, this about, um, we have heard this today, I mean, yeah, things are changing and of course uh, this changes competencies and skill sets uh, in libraries as well. So it's, uh, it's work um, under, I mean, it's a task force on libraries competencies and in support of e-research and scholarly communication. And the parties who are involved uh, include the uh, European Library Association, LIBER, uh, the Association of Research Libraries, the American and the Canadian Association of Research Libraries and uh, the Confederation of Open Access Repositories, which is the, the host somehow of this activity. And uh, later Irina will point you to the, the first outputs we have uh, just published on, on the core website. And um, so it was for, open for comments for a while, but now we come to a place where we say, okay, it's final and should be just it should be used. And then, of course, at some point, one might consider to update it. So um, the background is, of course, yeah, all the changes. I mean, the, the research, researchers find a lot of digital tools, and um, so and librarians are aware of their curational role. But what changes in the role of libraries is um, what we would like to address with this task force. So identifying, on the one hand, the service areas in libraries, and then on the other, the service, um, how does this match with uh, skills and competencies? And um, to remind you on a range of activities which are somehow related on what we do, I mean, there's has been these activities of the Foster Project, which is training for, offering training for open science, where Irina and I were involved, which of course meant that we're not doing it all ourselves, but this was, um, we, we provided some co-funding and a platform where people can share their their training resources after the, the events and also point to other materials which are, which are useful for training for, for such a topic. And there are, of course, lots of activities in the research data management domain of Digital Correction Center does this since, uh, right, I mean, over a decade or even longer, of course, and uh, LIBA does some work and, and other associations um, like HAL and uh, other uh, library associations. And then there's also the Edison project, which uh, started the, about a year ago. They address data science, also build up a curriculum. They have published a very interesting paper on their website. If you would like to see what is the landscape in terms of um, the skills uh, when you think about data science. And of course, they, they discover some gaps. I mean, in terms of research data management is, um, has to be somehow put into the uh, framework as well. So um, there are different Data, data professionals, of course, which are addressed uh, by such curricula. And of course, there are disciplinary activities like from Elixir, which is an SV um, European uh, network of, of infrastructure providers, and, and uh, Daria does some training and, and other, other uh, large uh, collaborative entities. So, um, what is actually a competence? <laughs> So it's a demonstrated ability to apply knowledge, skills, and attitudes to achieve um, observable results. You can also group this. I mean, there's actually a European e-competence framework which uh, formalizes this, and then you, uh, they come up with um, yeah, very finely detailed um, descriptions of, of certain uh, competencies and uh, put together in these competencies the set of skills. So skills is the, the finer thing where you have a a definite ability to conduct a, a certain thing, which could be uh, technical, but could also be a, a soft skill. So negotiating a contract, for example, which is not really soft, but <laughs> when you, they, they categorize it that way. And yeah, so as a background, we, we did not really aim for Im imitating this, but uh, it's, it's of course a useful resource to consider. And the areas we looked at first uh, are three areas, so managing research data, um, scholarly communication of Nexus, and digital humanities, because there is, of course, a lot of activity already in libraries, but sometimes it's, um, it's a little more in, in certain areas of the world where you would like to uh, spread the word in the other one. So how should you go about these this, uh, competencies in, in these areas to, to move this forward is then, of course, uh, in addition to, to be uh, figured out. So in other areas, um, one might consider 
next might, might be text and data mining and, and other, other topics. And of course, there are overlaps. Um, I will give just a few, I mean, a glimpse into what is in the, in the, on the side of um, activity areas in libraries when it comes to, uh, to research data management. Uh, we, we put this into clusters, like four clusters, first of all, providing access to data. So we use the <laughs> RDA, the nice uh, um, pictures uh, there, which fit more or less to the topics where we put them. Um, so consultation um, services where you help uh, researchers access data through databases or other means, and identifying data sets and providing advice on discovery and, and tools. And also, how, of course, how to cite reference data. And, and another topic would be then supporting researchers and students and managing their data, uh, providing also uh, advice on, on Ponda policies, um, where you now have in lots of institutions uh, um, libraries involved in this activity together with the research office to, to provide feedback to uh, research proposals when they have to make a little pitch on how they would go for uh, uh, putting, putting their data into the open when the European Commission comes up with a mandate for open data. Of course, there is a lot of activity on the, on the, on the ground and the universities immediately, and people would like to know who is actually doing uh, this research data support. And the research offices, of course, are uh, very grateful if, if the library comes along and says, oh, it's us. Um, so, and also the pro providing support and training, which often starts with involvement with graduate schools and um, PhD students, because they are, of course, a, a group which is uh, pretty accessible and you can put their uh, educational plans. Um, then, of course, also um, managing data collections, which is for some institutions, of course, a bigger step because you have to come up with a, with a data archive. And, and it needs some planning, some uh, technical support. And then, again, this has to be linked with, with the policies um, in in the uh, actual research groups where they have to figure out what is the actual um, workflow when, I mean, uh, first of all, to discuss early on uh, about how and where, uh, where to publish uh, or share within the group and then in, in further stages with, with, uh, with others and hopefully finally with the world and publishing. So, and competencies with, uh, will, of course, need some people who have some uh, yeah some knowledge which is uh, related to the subject where you have some uh, special um, uh, of course you, you have to have an idea on what data they produce and uh, how they handle the data when when does this emerge and uh, the, the landscape in the in the discipline what norms what standards are of relevance and helping them to bring this together for their discussion about uh, about the research group's policy on, on data. And this is just an example on what we think is the set of uh, competencies with, 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 um, which matches the managing the data collection. Of course, you have other sets for the other uh, uh, three areas which I uh, just uh, told you about. Um, so some uh, knowledge about how to select uh, data sets and metadata standards and schemas, discovery tools, mm, yeah, designing databases and, and other areas also, of course, uh, and leading into uh, preservation and how to uh, recover the data, forensic procedures for digital right? Uh, of course, uh, research data management uh, are not uh, research data managers are not working in silos. They are working uh, with other people involved uh, with repositories, for example, collection development, uh, copyright advice services, uh, uh, those who train on information literacy, and other areas. Uh, another area we looked at uh, was scholarly communication uh, and uh, open access. And uh, uh, there are lots of similarities with what Birgit has just spoke about. Uh, it's also about consultations and training. 
Uh, it's also about uh, helping uh, researchers, especially as we heard this morning, early career researchers uh, in sharing the research outputs, uh, uh, providing advice on uh, open access publishing, uh, open access repositories, uh, uh, supporting uh, publications uh, in open access journals, uh, and uh, helping to look at other ways of measuring quality other than just journal impact factors that don't really work. Uh, we also looked at digital humanities, and uh, that's uh, like on the one hand, it's an old area. On the other hand, in terms of libraries involvement, uh, it's still uh, quite a new area. And uh, here, of course, if you think about hiring or involving somebody to work with digital humanities, of course, it's important to have a knowledge of uh, the wheel, because that's, that's very important. So strong academic background uh, in, in, our, in the arts and humanities, and also technical skills. And uh, uh, librarians working in the area of digital humanities uh, could be advisors to projects, uh, advocates for more openness in digital humanities, uh, and also partners for special curating special collections. Uh, of course, again, uh, this person or this team wouldn't work in a silo, it would work with uh, scholarly communication officers and uh, those who manage research data. And uh, it's really very much up to your library structure, how you include people working with digital humanities, uh, is from different models, how it could be done. And uh, usually you'll have uh, collaborative teams, librarian plus specialists uh, from the departments. Uh, and uh, services and responsibilities would be, again, supporting publishing, providing technical services, uh, especially making sure that those digital collections are really interoperable and interacting with other digital collections that already exist, uh, um, consultations to faculties and students, uh, teaching and training activities, uh, and uh, managing special online spaces like collaborative labs. And uh, we have um, quite a detailed list of technical skills which are required, but in general these are how to visualize data, how to do text and data mining, what are metadata standards, uh, how to mark up the text, uh, how to work with semantic web technologies, uh, And uh, slightly related to that, uh, a new area we'll be looking at is text and data mining, as more and more librarians are thinking about this. So for example, Elena Cyprian Verona is here from Tartu University Library, and they are thinking uh, that that could be one of the services a library would be providing to faculty and students. So that's an area we will just start working in. And uh, if you would like to work with us, if you would like to create uh, competences and skills profiles for librarians working in text and data mining, we'll be very happy to collaborate with you. And um, in general, as many of these areas are still quite new, at least to librarians, that's not something they've been taught when they graduated from library and information schools. So how do they require those skills? Uh, so mainly at workshops and conferences, uh, or when they are part of working groups where they learn together, or sometimes they might attend uh, institutional training programs, uh, and also, of course, uh, online courses are already available, and it's a place for you if you want to improve your knowledge. And then, um, uh, what really works well when you manage to combine uh, newly high experts uh, with long-term staff. Uh, and uh, then together they dedicate their efforts to de develop new services, uh, uh, because that helps to combine experience, different backgrounds, and uh, it helps to bring new skills uh, 
and also there are very interesting stories how libraries repurpose their, or retrain uh, their staff to be involved, for example, to stop doing cataloging and start doing research data management. So, and of course, involvement in collaborative projects help, and that's where, for example, you funded project help because that's also a way for you to acquire new knowledge and expertise. Um, some conclusions, sir. Sometimes when you when you're looking for a job and when when you look at the job descriptions, it might be really excessively demanding in terms of expertise and skill, but sir. Uh, you shouldn't be immediately scared, sir, and we hope that with our uh, uh, competencies and skills uh, profiles, we will slightly help you to get gain this assurance that sir, you can be involved in some of these areas, so it's not so scary as it looks like. And uh, it's really all about collaborations, and if you I mean if you're good in collaborations, sure you'll manage. And uh, on the core website. We published uh, two of those uh, profiles uh, on research data management and uh, scholarly communication and open access and digital humanities is coming up uh, in, in the coming days. So it will be there and like I said, we'll be happy to work with you on text and data mining or any other profiles that you would like to have developed. Thanks a lot and uh, some of our courses and Dominic Tate is also here in the room and he was involved in uh, this working group uh, as a part of CORE. Thanks a lot and I don't know if we have time for questions. We have. So please. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions you have. So thank you Irena and Birgit, you did a fantastic job on keeping the 18 minutes. So that leaves us with two minutes for, for questions. Anybody has a question? Because I have a question. So my question is, um, it's also something like an observation. All these skills are not necessarily, um, this is not necessarily where researchers and our target groups will expect our, those competencies. So are we librarians good enough and are we trained enough to actually talk about these new competencies and skills that we are acquiring? So what is your opinion about that? I mean, we, we of course, uh, we're looking on the, on the one hand at the literature, and, but also in job advertisements. So what are the expectations of the employer, which is not, yeah, I mean, a librarian who decides um, to fill a post will have a rough idea of <laughs> what the person should um, bring. And of course, then it might match, on, of course, only, only partially, but if this um, does not really fit the expectations and you will fine tune <laughs> what you do in the next advertisement. And no, the, I mean, quest, the question was, does our, do our target groups actually know what kind of new competencies and skills librarians are yeah. acquiring and are we good in talking about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I guess it depends on how active the library is, sir, and uh, Nobody is perfect, sir, and I think we we are really well positioned to be providing these services. And uh, librarians can always partner with people like Pratik and uh, include their researchers or students in uh, those advocacy pro programs. So I think we are. I think to answer your question, we are. And uh, if researchers don't know that yet, sir, then library's mission should be more clearly communicated to. Senate and faculty to make sure that we are there to support. Uh, yeah.